everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today we are going to be talking about setup, payoff, and Chekhov's gun. Yes, that was a cattail. Now, if this were a novel and we were employing Chekhov's gun, that cattail would be important in the third act. Maybe I should have done a video on Schrodinger's cat. Anyway, back to the topic. The reason I want to talk about setup and payoff is that I've been doing a ton of videos on thrillers recently, and this is an incredibly important principle in thrillers and kind of goes into building your red herrings, but it's really an important principle in a lot of stories, any story. Now, on the face of it, Chekhov's gun is very, very simple. You'll hear it said that Chekhov's gun is when there is a gun in the first act of the story and thus it must be fired in act three. But I actually like to look at it in reverse, that if a gun goes off in the third act, it should appear in the first. In the most simple of terms, technically this is about foreshadowing, but it's really so much more than that. It's not literal and specific foreshadowing. It's about inserting details into your story, particularly in that setup in the beginning, that are specific, used with purpose, and essentially come to some meaning. It's about not packing your story with extraneous details for no reason. Because if you have your character talk about a gun on the wall for half a page in the beginning and then it never comes up again, why include it? And actually, it's almost better that you don't go on for half a page about the gun on the wall. It should be a little bit more subtle than that because it's kind of the subtle details that you thread through the narrative that only become important later, that kind of amuse and delight your reader. Subtlety is pretty important, though I mean we'll talk about some more obvious examples that do certainly work, but some of my favorite ones are a little more subtle. But generally, even beyond Chekhov's gun, I want to talk about setup and payoff, where it's important to set up details, ideas in the first part of your story, and then make sure that you pay them off in the end. So if your character is afraid of water, they should fall into a pool in the third act. Did I use that in a book? Yes, I did. That's just one example. A character who's afraid of heights, and it's mentioned in the beginning, you, your reader expects them to encounter a really intense height, but it should not just be that they encounter it, it's that overcoming it or experiencing it should be critical to some part of the character arc or plot arc, a character choice growth in act three. A technique that's also come up in some other videos that I think is good to bring up in the discussion of setup and payoff as well as Chekhov's gun is the rule of threes. This is another technique that you can use to keep certain things that are important to the ending front of mind for your reader. The rule of threes is a principle that you should mention or bring something up three times. There's a rhythm of threes that readers honestly almost expect where the first is the setup, the second is a reminder, recurrence, and then the third is when you essentially get your punchline, the other shoe drops. The rules of three is literally a thing in comedy, but it's a comfortable number rhythm that works for a lot of readers. And particularly when you are considering setup and payoff and foreshadowing, Three is a very, very safe number if you're going, well, have I brought up this detail enough that when it comes back in the end and is important that it's going to work for the reader that like they remember it. Because honestly, sometimes mentioning something once is sufficient, but sometimes it's not, especially if you do it so subtly that the reader gets to the end and is like, what? So the rule of three is a really safe one to follow. You have something set up in the beginning, you have a reminder of it in act two, and then the third occurrence, which is the big one, is in act three. Though the other time this came up was my middles video, and I used the rule of threes as an example of how to do kind of fun and games and kind of layer story and conflict in act two. Also an option in that section of the book, but specifically I'm talking about the rule of threes for setup and payoff. But back to Chekhov's gun, i.e. payoff. The good news is you can actually work backwards when you are writing a book. You don't have to plan everything out ahead of time in an outline necessarily. Even if you are an outliner, you don't have to put the stress on yourself to come up with these things at the beginning. You can write your book and then once you have the end of your book and you understand kind of what that important thing is, you can go back and insert it in editing. That is the beauty of editing. You can work backwards to make sure that you have those threads in the book. 
And to that end, I also want to talk about this principle as it relates to red herrings. With red herrings, you're usually not going to follow the rule of threes because that's going to be a little heavy handed for something that's ultimately a dead end. But I think it's very important with a good red herring, the kind that you were threading through an entire book, that you essentially consider the Chekhov's gun principle of making sure that any details you use as the hinge foundation of the logic for that red herring and really the logic of why it is not ultimately the solution, that you think about this principle and go back and ensure that you've inserted some kind of specific and purposeful detail early on in the story so that when the reader comes to that thing, it all holds together. It doesn't have to be big. It can be inserting little moments early on of something that they say or do or something that a character observes, but just so that that specific detail works out in the end. Now, ultimately, Chekhov's gun is almost overused as a buzzword, and that's why I do like to look at it the opposite way, which isn't the, if there's a gun in the first act, it must go off in the third, but more if it goes off in the third, it should appear in the first act. I liked that generally because it makes it more broad, and that's the thing. Chekhov's gun, the idea of it is everywhere because at its heart, it's just good setup and payoff, putting everything into your book with a purpose rather than just like randomly throwing details in that never come to anything. But I wanted to share some famous examples of Chekhov's gun that were like, are really in your face, really there, that are really good examples. Honestly, they're the most easy to find for movies for some reason, but I, I really thought about some of my favorite ones in literature where I'm not spoiling it to tell you. I mean, meaning I really hope you've read these books, but actually the first one is a movie which has a brilliant use of this principle. And I believe the movie also uses the rule of threes. Like these things come up more than once in the movie. And that is the thing that thread through, which is the little girl with her glasses of water where the water tastes bad, but she doesn't want to throw it out and she leaves them throughout the house. The brother with his baseball bat and his baseball career and the son having asthma. All of these things appear early on, thread through the story, and then are critical for the third act. There's also the thing with his wife. I mean, the whole movie is literally kind of around the principle of everything happens for a reason, but it is a very good example of very deliberate, specific details that when you're first watching it don't really mean anything, but then are critical to the ending. The next one is my beloved Hunger Games and a pretty good specific example of Chekhov's gun is the Nightlock, which is mentioned early on as being poisonous and you just kind of move away from it and it's kind of lost, but then it is a really critical little detail of Chekhov's gun when Fox Face dies because she doesn't know that it's poisonous and she eats it. And then my favorite one that is less so a smoking gun, literally, but like just a brilliant use of detail that is color in the beginning that you assume to be one thing, and then is the Chekhov's gun in the third act. It is like, poof. I love Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. It is my favorite Harry Potter book in large part because I think the act structure, the red herrings and all of this are just Magnifico, a master class, and she's got her Chekhov's gun, and that is Mad Eye Moody's flask. The way it is used is freaking brilliant. Also pretty sure she does the rule of threes because it's mentioned early on, and then there's recurrences of it so that it's there, but you've assigned this assumption to it, but then she turns it on its head in act three. And when I read that book, I just was like, really, really good example of all of these principles kind of wrapped into one. Set up, pay off, rule of threes, Chekhov's gun, how to shore up those red herrings with purposeful details. All of this is helpful in any work of fiction, but particularly <laughs> important in a mystery or a thriller. But hey, the seagull is not a mystery or a thriller, and it's literally why we have this concept. So you can use it in so many different dramatic presentations. Let me know down below if you have any questions about Chekhov's gun, setup and payoff, and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I will make more crafty types of videos. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and happy writing.